welcome to my bench. Uh, today we have something hopefully pretty easy. This is a little Boston Acoustic um, Receptor Radio HD. It's a HD radio that's mm, they were one of the first first -er ones to come out. Um, and actually they work pretty good. They're a little deaf in my opinion, but they work pretty well. Um, and it is HD, so you can check your station or others. It's got a uh, speaker in the front, and there's another speaker that comes off the back. It has uh, bands, presets, tuning, push button, and volume on and off. Push button there. Uh, screen up here to show you what you're doing. Uh, and up on the top, it's got your uh, how to store your presets, dim and setup. Clear your presets, set your alarms, alarm one in, alarm two, sleep and snooze. Feels like it's probably pretty unbreakable, which is a good thing. Um, and alarm on and off, and your display. And what the display does, we'll look at this later, but what it does is it uh, switches between um, text that uh, comes off the RDS, uh, the plain uh, eight character text that just flashes up and then goes away and another comes on to the scrolling uh, text display. Uh, and uh, on the back we got the um, base port antenna connector here for AM. Here's your little little AM connectors here. They go into the little holes. Uh, I don't know if the inside where the antenna is for that, but I have a feeling. I think it's this. I, I don't know. Um, over here, you've got auxiliary uh, input. You got phones output. You got the the connector for the second speaker. You got something that's marked uh, service only. That looks like a uh, HD TV or what? Do you, what did they call those things? Um, high definition TV output. And then you got the power connector, which is uh, unique to this thing. 4 pin. It's 12 volts at 3 amps. Manufactured by Boston Acoustics Inc. Peabody, Massachusetts, USA and made in Malaysia. Problem with this one is that uh, part fell off. That part is the FM antenna connector. It's right there. And if you can see the back of it. Can you see that? There it is right there. It's It's busted busted clean off and if you look in there there's the rest of it so we got to get this apart and then, uh, see if we can get this put back in there somehow I looked at it and it looks like it is keyed sort of and evidently they put it in there the keyway it's flat on two sides and then they peen it over to hold it in so quite frankly, there isn't a hell of a lot holding it in there. Anyway, let's see what it takes to get this apart. Right now I can tell you there's one, two, three, there's four screws here. We'll take that out, those out. A little one, half an inch long. Another little one. Wow, half an inch long and doesn't want to come out. No, 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 no. Okay, fine. Okay. And there's another one here. I presume that these are part of it. I'm guessing. But And there's one over here that's bigger. Hmm, this is for holding the antenna connector stationary yeah that was pretty good size too for what it's doing there's none under here no none under there nope none under the feet oh there's a hint looks like it's got little little snaps here but there's no more screws and the knobs are just on there. Let's see. 
Well, let me try this. Yeah. Aha. Oh, cool. Hey, the front just pops off, and that's it. What the heck holds it on there? Oh, there's little, little clips along the top that go into little ridges in here. Okay, that's cool. And here's the the screen and the speaker. It appears there's a screw up here, which I can't get to unless I take this out. Okay. Let's try that. In here we've got not a bunch of stuff. There's the IR sensor for the remote control. And the uh, volume and channel knobs. This is just a just a display board here. Oh, okay. Well, that holds that in. We got a screw here, screw here, and a screw there. Does this front piece is that? Yeah, it's separate. the 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 actual front piece is separate from the rest of the box. All right, well, I'm going to take a bigger screwdriver, I think. Yeah, ooh, that's in there tight. Let's try this. Wow, that's long-winded, <laughs> you think? Okay. Ah, those are long screws. They go right through everything. And here's another one. This one looks different. Oh, it's short. Huh, okay. And... Well, it's lifting from this side, but not from this side. I wonder if the screw's just holding in the speaker. Wow, here's another long one. Same length as the others. Okay. So you got to take all those out too? No. Maybe. Oh no, here it comes. Oh, all right, then the whole front comes off. Well, that's kind of cool. Okay, so I was wrong. It has a AM antenna in there. It's not that little flap on the top. And there's the board. And here's a big plug. Let's take that loose. Okay, and here's the board. So the only thing connected to the board now is the speaker. Okay. Right's on the red, red's on the right, left. Oh no, they're keyed. The black is a little one, the plus is a big one. And that's about it because the rest of this goes up into the into the buttons box there. All right, let me set that aside. Get rid of this big monster. All right, so how are we going to get into here? Here, what's that? Huh? Oh no! It looks like this whole back piece here is glued down. What is, how is this made? Well, here's the part I need to get to. It's under there. Is that? Yeah, it's, it's a plastic piece that covers up all of these external things with a rubber gasket going around it. And there's a place for a screw hole. There's a screw. Oh. Okay, so 
maybe to get to get this plastic no that's down there pretty good to get this plastic piece off we're gonna have to, okay well maybe we take these screws off we'll see what happens same length as the other ones pretty long really considering they're just going into a piece of plastic well, I guess that's good they're just going into a piece of plastic okay so huh well, there's a little rubber I wonder if I have to lift that up oh look the, the, everything is cut out of the plastic piece here uh, um, so it's not like going around it it's just cut out to the bottom and there's glue around there. I hope it's not that crap that's gets conductive. These radios aren't that old. I wouldn't think so. That's that's loose. But um this side is not is it just stuck? No, it's not stuck. The glue doesn't actually go around it just goes onto this rubber piece. So, must be another screw somewhere. Where? Aha! <laughs> right there. Well, that's nice. There's a little tuner. Uh, there's three screws up here. Yeah, it looks like they hold that thing on. Come on. loose but it's all connected with a very fine pitch connector back here but it's just all wires well, that, and it just unplugs ah look at there neat BI 06031609 very well shielded whatever probably part of the tuning oh okay well, put you over here. Now I can get to this screw. More of that glue. That glue is dark brown. I wonder if that stuff is conductive. We'll find out. This meter is only good to about 20 megs, but that should be enough. Yeah, well, it started off at about 10 and went up immediately over 30 or over 20. Yep, okay. Well, it seems to be sort of conductive, but it's a lot less than I am. Unfortunately, it's over the top of some very tiny 0402 parts, and um, I'm not going to dig into that. Why would they put this stuff over? It scares me. I'm not going to do that. Okay. No. Um. Oh. Yep, there it is. Cool. All right. Oh, so we finally got to this. Oh, let's see. This is one of the squares bigger than the other. Flats are bigger than the other flat. Uh, no. Nope. All right. So, kind of goes in like that. Goes in, and like I said, once they put it in there, all they did was peen it in over to hold it in. Oh, 
and that's all it took to smack it back in there. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to leave it that way. I am going to solder that in there. That's that is stupid. As as much as this thing cost, I mean, this radio was not cheap. <laughs> You'd think they could have. You would think they could have uh, actually put a screw-in connector back there or something rather than just mashing that in and hitting it with a hammer on. Literally on one side, I can see it now, on one side they've got the little peen, the other side is nothing. Unbelievable. We can hire this kid to do this for like nine cents a day. It'll break, but we don't care. By that time, it'll be out of warranty. Uh, uh, this is steel. Uh, the only thing I got to do is make sure that I don't heat it up enough to <laughs> seriously destroy the the inside layer of stuff good old-fashioned Weller pump as much power as you need to keep the tip hot soldering iron yeah a little more I, I, I don't have a Heiko here I like my 888 I really really do there that'll do it yeah that soldered down whoop there we go where to go where are you there you are yeah, that's soldered down. Nice and hot, too. Alright, now all I gotta do is get get the geek glasses, because I can't see what I'm doing at all here. Once it gets down to the little stuff. Age is fun. Alright, so we have That piece there, and that piece there. So I basically I gotta kind of just slop up this because it's in the middle of this F connector, and then slop up this, and then. Smash them together, soldered. Uh -huh. Alright, just to be sure, it looks good. Let us go from here. Oh, no, you won't. Not with this. Alright, let's stick a piece of solder in it. Uh, maybe not. It's pretty fine solder. No, not doing solder piece of wire. Hello wire. Oh, and a uh, little chunk of wire. Somebody stole my good wire cutters. Gonna have to beat him up. We're redoing the uh, studios. And all of them. And most of my tools. At least all the ones that are any good. Are spread out throughout the Studio rebuild studios. All right, there we go. Uh, down here and yes and no. Okay, so got center and no, uh, no short. Yay! All right. Like uh, so far, this is going immensely well. All right, let's put this thing back on. Seems like an awful lot of work to go through for a plastic cover. But hey, if you're going to spend this much money on something, several hundred dollars for these radios when they came out. I mean, they're not new. They're, they're quite old now. Okay. Pour out the screws. And all of these little ones are the same size. So... black one goes there 
and over here. And over here. Yeah, no. I did not ask how that happened. I don't care. It's my job to fix this stuff, not to say anything. Let's put this back in here. Boy, it doesn't go in very far, but I guess it goes in long, far enough. Okay. Seems fragile. These little silver screws. Interesting looking caps. I wonder what the deal is with those. That's weird. Can you see that? The caps, the the cover for those Oh, those aren't caps. Ten micro Henry's. Those are coils. Ha! They look just like caps and they even got a stripe on the side. Those are ten micro Henry coils. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a coil mark like that. Very interesting. Huh, okay. Well, there's one, two, one more. Got off track a little. These caps look fine. Of course, they're not split. 25 volts, 330s, 470 at 16, 220 at 16s, and 330 at 25. <sighs> and not much else down here. I mean, there's the crystal for the for the PLL. Don't know what that is. Voltage regulator. Yeah. Think. I think. I think. I think. Think. Twenty nine fifteen. Yep. I don't know what the rest of this is on here. Do I really care? DR18201 or OR Texas Instruments hmm. All the magic's done in here and here Another regulator little op amp TPA112 Okay, what's this one? PCM 1803. Hmm. All right, in post I'll look up some of these and see if I can find out what they are. And this big one up here is a text Texas Instruments TAS 5508. Yeah, TAS 5508. Hmm. Not much. Really, let's see, this is the powers over here. Don't know what the drivers is. Probably that's the audio driver right there. Hmm. Alright. See if I can find some of those when I do this in post. Uh, I'm at the shop. I don't have the ability to do that stuff right here. So, let's see. Goes in that away. All the screws back in. Mm. Yep. Okay. And plus speaker goes there, minus speaker goes there. I'm going to be stupidly sure of myself and just say this is going to work and put it all back together again. We all know that that's just being dumb. There's a whole bunch of wires. It's not like they actually... That's a lot of wires going up to that little display. Like I said, this thing isn't new. It's it's several, several years old now. Alright. Huh. Look at that. It's, it's already split. And I didn't do that. Not great. Alright. Squish her back down in there. Oops. 
Let's not poke a hole through the speaker. Pretty good, uh, pretty good magnet. <clears throat> pretty good magnet on that speaker. This whole unit weighs a lot more than it looks like it does. All right, and then these guys, other big ones. Here. Come on, fingers. Wow. It goes a long way into there. Push button switch in this thing is getting kind of awful. Uh, will this hold on to this? No. Where's my, Where's my screwdriver go? Hmm, there it is. One thing I don't like about that electric, this electric screwdriver is this tip is not magnetic, it's force fit. And I would like it to be slightly magnetic if I could, but I can't find anything like this. I got one at home, but it's not nearly this speed. Um, this one, I, I like it. I've used it for years. Yeah, I know it's a piece of junk, but I like it. Who cares? I keep buying batteries for it. <laughs> it's got... Uh, what is it? Four and a half volt NICADs in it. If you overcharge them, the charger just pumps power and says, "Yeah, I don't care if you're charged. I'm, I'm not gonna quit. No, why should I do that?" Okay. Slide it into little slots in the top. These guys are not. They're keyed, but there's no markings on them for dots because they're, they're rotary switches. Uh, what do they call those things? I can't remember right now. Um, yeah. Little continuous rotary switches just go round and round, don't have stops. Impulse switches. Yeah, I'm not going to remember it. I'm not going to, I'm going to quit trying. It's hurting my head. I'm sure somebody will say something. Well, it looks okay. Centered. <laughs> Does not look like it suffered any huge rip amounts whenever it came off. <coughs> Let's put the speaker or the AM back in here. Oop, there's one. Alright, well, it's all put back together. Doesn't look any worse for wear. Uh, I suppose we ought to get the power supply, turn this thing on, see if it works. Here's the other speaker for it. Yes, it's stereo. I remember in the old days. Not everything was stereo. Actually, I guess it, even now you can buy um, boom boxes that look like they're stereo, but they're not. Okay. Cheap. Uh, that's stereo multiplex chips. Got to cost. 14 cents in single units, 2 cents in lots of 50,000. All right, here we go. And
Boston, woo! Receptor Radio, FM. Sun gun. It works. Whoops. Don't want people to yell at me. My station, one of them. Uh, presets work. All right, so let us let's put it on something FME. Oh, I can tell you right now that's working. Give me a piece of wire. Ah, capacitive coupling through that thing. Ah, there we go. FM2. And no, there we go. So, yep, that's FM2. There's FM1. All right. So everything's working. Yay! Let's see. Turn the volume down so I don't get in trouble. Of course, I'm not going to because it's incidental music and they can yell all they want. I'm repairing this thing. All right, so the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, that works. I don't know if you can see any of this or not. 1979, displays time, displays that, the 8 and 8, and now it displays the full text. All right, the full scrolling text, 1979, Smashing Pumpkins. All right, well, guess what? It works. Good night. Beautiful. Well done. Hey, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, please, and, uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I'm fixing more of this stuff. This was kind of radio station related. It belongs to the owner. I'm, yeah. Anyway, uh, talk to you all later. Till next time.